So these two companies have been at it again and again over time and I think this is a story that we are all familiar with. And today we are going to answer one simple question. Which one of the two should you choose? So for comparison purposes, I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I have had the chance to play with both of them and just to test them out and just see which one makes the better fit for which person. So let's dive in. So I should admit, when growing up, I was 100% a Samsung fan. Like, if someone told me to move from Android to iPhone, trust me, that would never happen. I was 100% embedded into the Android ecosystem. But now I should say I am more of an iPhone fan than Android, but let's, let's see how this goes. So we are gonna start with the price. Now the Note 20 Ultra seems to be on the pricier side as compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, in which it enters the market at the price of 1300. I mean, that's quite a lot of money if you ask me. As compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which enters the market at 1099, so you definitely can see the price difference. Let's move on to the design. When we talk about the design, the two phones are really well built, I should say. Both phones actually feel really good in their hands, and even when you use them, they will give you a certain satisfaction that I should say android just fits android and apple just fits apple for the iphone 13 pro max it basically just looks exactly the same as the previous models well with a slight difference but i mean most of the parts most of the looks definitely looks like the previous flagships that apple released which was the iphone 12 pro max it is covered with a stainless steel which I should say it seems to be much more durable as compared to aluminium. And the back is made out of glass, which gives it a nice feel when you touch it. I mean, especially when it's cold and you decide to use it without an extra cover. So, I mean, the back actually feels really good. It is actually not a fingerprint magnet as compared to other phones. So I love the type of glass they used, which makes it far, far much better as compared to other phones that have glass on the back. And when we talk about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, this actually feels much, much better. And I love the aesthetics that they went for. And one of the striking differences it has is the size of the cameras in the back. So the camera module bump has been actually risen and it's quite big, I should say. It doesn't actually allow it to lay flat on the table. So if you're gonna use it without a cover, this will not sit flat on any table. It's actually covered with aluminum around it, which I should say the phone actually feels really, really good. Even though aluminum does not compare to stainless steel in terms of durability, this will definitely give you a very good lifespan if you decide to keep this phone for quite a while. So you have nothing to worry about when it comes to the belt and I should say it actually looks really, really good. And just like the iPhone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 actually has a glass back, which also does not attract fingerprint as much as other phones on the market. So now let's talk about size and color. When it comes to the size, I should say the iPhone 13 Pro Max seems to be thicker, wider, heavier, than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The Samsung actually seems to be far, far much better because it's lighter. Of course, the weight is not that heavy, but I should say if you're someone who's coming from an Android and you decide to use the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you will definitely feel the difference in terms of size. And speaking of colors, the iPhone 13 Pro Max comes in four different colors, which are graphite, gold, silver, and blue. Of course, they have all types of weird names they chose to give them. I mean, Pacific Blue and all that, but but all in all, I mean, the colors really don't matter that much because most of us, when we buy our phones, we still end up with a nice cover on it. On the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is actually way lighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Their weight is not really that much noticeable because it is really light, which is a very, very big advantage for this phone as compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And when it comes to colors, they offer three different types that you can choose from, which is Mystic Black, Bronze, and White. So you have the option to choose which color you want. But again, I always say this, the color doesn't matter because you will definitely buy a cover for this phone just to give it that extra protection. So consider just choosing the colors of the covers than the phone. Now let's talk about the displays. So they do have a very, very big difference when it comes to the displays, which are visible just by looking at them at first glance. So for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the display is actually flat and uh, I should say it actually makes putting a screen protector very, very easy. 
and it actually feels good so the flat design is actually a personal favorite i don't know about you guys let me know down in the comments but i like the flat design and it actually gives the phone a much better picture quality when you're streaming some videos because of the flat display and the display on the iphone 13 pro max is coated with ceramic shield which most of us are not really interested let's be honest i mean it doesn't really give much of a difference when it comes to dropping it and cracking it in which i should say it's always a better decision to put a screen projector on your iphone 13 pro max if you are going to want that extra protection and when it comes to operating the actual screen it can support up to 120 hertz so meaning your scrolling on the internet will be battery smooth and you definitely won't notice any lag although the display has 120 hertz i should say it doesn't really give a much difference with the previous models because i mean this is like trying to fix something that's not broken so if you want to see the full details about the iphone 13 pro max i did a quick review in one of the videos i will link a time card i think somewhere at this side or this side so yeah click on it after this video and just check that one out but for now the 120 doesn't set much difference when it comes to operating this device especially if you are someone who just uses the phone for communication purposes as it was intended to and the other thing about this display is that it actually has a very secure face id i mean this is one of the best face ids i've ever used on a device and i should say it's very reliable but wait what if you have a mask on no worries so if you have an apple watch the apple watch will definitely be able to unlock your device just by having it close by which i should say is something that's reliable but overall the face id is very very secured but the face id on its own is very reliable in terms of securing your phone and jumping over to the note 20 ultra i should say the display seems to be very impressive it actually has a 6.9 inches display but i actually have one particular problem about this type of display so sometimes when you're using it you're going to observe that some of the content that you're looking at is going to be overlapped over the curved edges so i should say it's not really the best so that's something you should consider if you are going for this type of phone other than that it's actually similar to the iphone 13 pro max which offers a similar refresh rate of up to 120 hertz now speaking of the brightness i should say the brightness is very impressive this one goes up to 1600 nits so if you're using it outside i mean the picture quality is going to be very visible and nothing to worry about fingerprint oh fingerprint is amazing i miss having fingerprint on the iphone i mean since they took it away the face id is really reliable don't get me wrong but i should say there's something about fingerprint that just makes life much much easier so this one actually has the fingerprint right on its display which is very impressive so if you're going to go for this phone this is one of the reasons i would actually want to use it just because of the fingerprint so we hope the iphone 14 is gonna have fingerprint even when we know it won't but fingers crossed i mean they tend to bring back certain things they take away in future products so we definitely know the fingerprint will be coming but we're just not sure when it will come so let's head over to the cameras so both phones have three cameras at the back which serve similar purposes and also have a single camera at the front for those nice selfies that you're gonna take so to start with the iphone 13 pro max has a 12 megapixel camera at the back which is the main camera it has a three times telephoto lens and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and for those nice selfies the iphone 13 pro max also has a front facing camera which is 12 megapixels so you will definitely get nice picture quality when you're using the front camera for those zoom calls or just those nice selfies you would like to take and similar to the iphone 12 pro max the note 20 ultra has a 12 megapixel wide camera and a staggering 108 megapixel primary camera i mean the camera on this bad boy is really really good i should say it also has a telephoto camera at the back which is also 12 megapixel with an additional five times periscope 12 megapixel camera at the back so i should say the cameras on this phone are actually really good i should say when it comes to comparing the two the iphone 13 pro max is actually a personal favorite because the camera seems to be more realistic as compared to the samsung galaxy note 20 ultra so this one will be based on preference based on what you'd like as a user so let me know down in the comments which of the two cameras you prefer and why lastly let's talk performance so the iphone 13 pro max is powered by their most latest a15 bionic chip 
which I should say packs really really great performance in this small device. It also has a 6GB RAM and the base model starts at 128GB. And speaking of charging, the iPhone 13 Pro Max uses a lightning cable which I should say is not really a big deal for me because I have my AirPods that I always use the lightning cable for so I tend to always have a cable on me which is not really much of a problem. But I should say it would be better if the iPhone 13 Pro Max actually used Type-C so and after they bumped up the battery capacity of the iPhone 13 Pro Max I mean the battery life is just amazing as compared to other models of the iPhone So if you are really considering battery life, I should say the iPhone 13 Pro Max is a personal favorite And this one can support up to 20 watts of charging So basically if you have an Apple charger that actually goes up to 20 watts This would do the job so not really the best but I should say it really gets the job done and you're gonna have your device charged up in no time. The iPhone 13 Pro Max does not support reverse charging. I mean, this is something that was rumored about it some time back, and up to now, we don't get that reverse charging that other devices offer with their flagships. So now let's jump over to the Samsung Realm. So to start with, the chip in this device is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 or you're going to get it with the Samsung Exynos one depending on which region you're actually buying this phone from. Unlike the 13 Pro Max, this phone has 12 GB of RAM which I should say is not really a big deal because these two devices use different operating systems so depending on which system uses how much space it really is not a big deal because this 12 GB RAM in here gets the job done in this particular phone and the 6 GB gets the job done in the iPhone 13 Pro Max without any problem. So the Note 20 Ultra comes with the Android operating system which I should say offers quite a lot of features as compared to the iPhone. So if you're someone who likes playing around with apps, I should say that Samsung is actually the best route to go. And simply because most of the apps you're going to get on Android, you don't really have to pay for them like the iPhone. It actually has USB Type-C, which I should say this is amazing. And speaking of charging, this one supports up to 25 watts of charging. So charging is actually much quicker and I should say this is a huge advantage that this phone has over the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And lastly, it actually supports reverse charging, which is amazing. I mean, in which having to place another device just on top of this phone and wirelessly charge it is absolutely amazing. Oh, I almost forgot. This phone also supports the S Pen. So you have a pen to actually use it to type your documents if you need to do something like that. This is a very helpful thing to have on a device, so something you should really consider, like really, really consider. So which one should you go for, the iPhone 13 Pro Max or the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra? And honestly, when it comes to making that decision, it dwindles down to preference. So one is Android, one is Apple. So depending on which system you prefer, I should say either phone is actually a good way to go, especially that the Android device offers more functions, if you ask me, as compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And if you are someone who likes using applications, the apps on this phone are usually free as compared to the ones on the iPhone. And if you're someone who loves the simplicity of just using a phone without using too many applications downloaded in the device, I should say the iPhone makes a very good buy and if you're going to talk about the camera and the like, I should say the iPhone is also a personal favorite. So the two cannot be equally compared because they run on two different softwares. So I should say that the Android software is actually amazing and definitely is a very good software and the iPhone software also is just amazing. Both phones have proven to handle that very well, especially how they manage the battery and also process things like pictures and videos that you can take. In which I should say this one can actually support up to 8K of video quality as compared to this one which is limited to 4K. So I mean that should be something to consider especially when making the decision if you're going to be using one of these phones for purposes of shooting videos. Alright I guess we're all done so let me know down in the comments which of the two phones you're using and what's the reason behind it. So and if you enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for future content just like this and I will see you in the next video. Peace.